So Apple has just released their watchOS 11 public beta. This is something they announced about a month ago at the Worldwide Developer Conference, and it's ultimately gonna be the watchOS version of software that lands in September on likely new Apple Watches. In this video, I'm gonna focus on probably the biggest change from a sports standpoint, which is the new training load metrics as well as vitals and the effort score pieces. There are a bunch of other new features that are kind of sports related in this update, which I'll get to in other videos. But for this video, I wanna just talk on the training load pieces. I've been using it for the past month, so I've got a pretty good idea of where it works well and where it, it could use some changes. And that's the cool part about being beta, is that hopefully they'll incorporate some of these changes. And they have indeed done that in the past. So the very first piece we're gonna talk about is something called effort score, because that's the building blocks to get to the training load components. Effort score, the way it works, is it's essentially a score once you finish a workout. So you have to start a workout. So you go in into your workouts, you choose a given workout type, uh, say outdoor run, you start that workout, and then you go and do your workout. Uh, now, at the end of that workout, when you hit save, it's gonna show you an effort score rating. Now you'll see the score in one of two ways. By default, if you scroll down in your summary screen, You'll see it right there, effort, uh, and it shows as hard, I can tap that, and I can change this to whatever I want it to be. You can see the different descriptions there uh, for easy, as well as moderate, and then hard. But you also have the option to go ahead and have it automatically prompt you every single time, as soon as you hit save, to enter the effort score right then and there which is what I've configured and enabled in the settings, so I can do that every single time. Though I would know a bit of a beta bug, it doesn't seem to always do that. Sometimes it just like forgets. It just, I don't know, maybe it's tired or something and doesn't bother to ask me. Uh, so you've got this effort score right here, and this is the fundamental building block for everything else from a training load standpoint. Uh, and the fact that you can change this is pretty interesting. One of the downsides though, is that for me, I found almost every single one of these effort scores is seven. Sometimes eight, but almost always seven. No matter what I tend to do, whether it's a really super easy run or a longer, harder run or intervals, whatever the case is, it's almost always seven. I suspect though, the reason for that is that they're probably using Apple zones. And you can look at your zones on the phone app. If you go into the watch uh, app there and then go to workout and go all the way down to zones, you'll see them down here at the bottom. You just measure heart rate zones. Uh, and then I've got to automatic set. Uh, so I've been doing automatic zones for all of my stuff, just kind of leaving it as a default, just like a normal user probably would. And these are the zones that it's configured. Note that it automatically figures out both your resting and maximum heart rates, which I think those are close enough to be ballpark level. But these zones here seem awfully skewed low to me. That doesn't seem like normal zones for, for me. It's not what I would normally use for all the rest of my other devices, but I'm leaving it here because that's the default. And I think, as you'll see in just a second, that's sort of what Apple's aiming for this entire ecosystem, but I'm seeing this is a bit of a, a tricky point here. And hey, a quick note, if you're finding this video interesting or useful or informative or something like that, just simply whack the like button at the bottom there or subscribe. It really helps out this video and the channel quite a bit. What happens is you've got that effort score. And again, you can change that to whatever you want. So for example, at the end of my two hour run earlier today, it actually gave me a nine, the first time I've ever gotten a nine before. Despite this being a relatively, I wouldn't describe it as chill because it was a bit pressed towards the end, but it certainly was not quote, all out by any measure. Uh, I've had much harder runs, both shorter and much longer runs. And so for this to be nine, again, seems awfully skewed to me. Point being there that you can change this when it's wrong. So at the end of my run today, I changed it to a seven because that's what it felt like. It was kind of hard towards the end of it. It wasn't like super hard. I probably could have been maybe more of like a, a six to be fair. We could, we'll just go six, I guess that's fine. Uh, and then now that is updated. And what happens is effort score gets immediately taken into your training load. So if we go into the activity app, so you can access it that way by tapping that there. If I get back to, come on. You can access it from the uh, apps there by just choosing activity app. And then the upper right hand corner, tap the little swiggly thing. Uh, and now you see your training load. And there's two lines that you're seeing here. This white line that you got right there, that is your 28 day training load. So your average over the last 28 days, uh, basically just kind of trended up and down. And then the colorful line there is the average over the last seven days. And if I scroll back and forth, I can see how I compare to that trend line each day. So you can see on Tuesday, it was well above 
on uh, 87% on Thursday, well above, then kind of going back down because the weekend is a bit more chill. Uh, and then here again, I'm back to 23% above. Uh, and then we'll show you whether at the bottom, if that's typical or not, and I can tap this. And of course, what's interesting is I can change the activities on my phone or on the watch, uh, those FR scores, and it'll change this. So if you forgot to rate something or you wanted to change the rating, you can do that and see the impact of this in real time. Here's an example that's side by side, a bit of a before and after where I changed the FR score rating for that really easy uh, run this weekend from being a seven to a one. And you can see the slight difference that dipped there at the end of that particular training load piece. Now, those of you that are familiar with training load though and other devices will know one important thing. You're missing the actual number. Uh, so it doesn't show my actual training load. Compare that here to a Garmin watch. If I just pull up today's, uh, let's see, that cute load here. There we go. This is a training load on a Garmin watch. This is the same time span, the exact same last seven days. Uh, and you can see, vaguely speaking, they kind of follow each other, right? Up and then down over the weekend and then kind of pop up here. In terms of this line here though on Apple's though, the scale is just wrong. Like you can see that everything seems very, very flat despite this final day here being a pretty big bump for this morning's, you know, two hour run. But here it's just like, eh, just a, a little bit of a bump. So I like to see Apple fix the scale so it's actually usable because right now it's not super usable. But the other big challenge is the lack of a number. I don't know what my acute load is here at all. Of course, Apple is tracking that behind the scenes because that's how they get the above 23% and steady and so on behind the scenes. And each of these labels, by the way, there are uh, five different labels. There is well below, uh, below, uh, steady, above, and then well above aim to kind of guide you, just like Garmin, hair has high, etc. But in Garmin's case, this green part there is their trending low tunnel, which is essentially the normal load, if you will, that I would have. Uh, so you can see both the high end and the low end. And I find that super helpful to kind of figure out my overall load. I'd like to see Apple do something similar here, either give me a number or give me some sort of range that's a little more clear as to what I'm working with. Uh, now, I think Apple's hesitancy on that is they want this to be accessible to the masses. They want you know, this to be something that many people can understand without getting too intimidated by things like acute load and uh, a number and all this kind of stuff. And, and that's a fair perspective, except I would argue Apple's already gone way down that road with other metrics. For example, they've got cycling power, vertical oscillation, ground contact time, stride length, VO2 max metrics, running power. Um, like, I mean, there's uh, uh, FTP. These are all things that are kind of pretty like geeky already. So in the endurance sports crowd, I would say that training load is one of the least geeky things you could actually have. Uh, and to not have that number makes it really, really tough for me to use. And I think probably a lot of other athletes. So I don't mind if Apple like has a toggle somewhere to turn that on. There's a million other toggles in the, the watch app for data and stuff like that. Um, but otherwise it's really tough just to, to use this as a barometer for my actual training load. And now there is one big advantage, massive advantage that Apple has over its competitors though, when it comes to training load, which is a simple fact that you can change it in terms of the effort score. And the reason why that matters is for activities that are not really high in heart rate. Remember, the effort score is almost entirely based, not almost, it's entirely based on the average heart rate for your particular workout. It's as simple as that. And then your training load is simply based on effort score, Multiply times duration. That is the total calculation that Apple is doing. And there's plenty of academic precedents for you know, doing basically self uh, evaluation of workouts and having that you know, scale of training load. That's actually not a bad thing. Here's a paper on that right there that validates that most humans actually get that right. And as you can see right here, when I adjusted my effort scores each day, the general trend between Garmin and Apple where Garmin is doing all automatic uh, calculation of training load and Apple where I'm basically giving that feedback and tweaking the effort score, they're relatively similar. But the one gap that Garmin and Polar and all those other companies have is that they cannot account for low heart rate, long distance stuff, long duration stuff, in particular hiking. Uh, so if I go out for an ultra hike where I might do 12, 14 hours a day, I could do 30 to 70 kilometers or so in a day with potentially huge elevation gains, but keep a relatively low heart rate, <clears throat> Garmin will give me the same training load value as a 10K tempo run. Versus Apple, I can say, you know what? That was an all out effort. I can really tweak that scale, go up and say, this was a big, big day and have it really impact my training load versus I can't do that on everything else. So while I've got some criticisms of the way Apple is doing this, I think they're on the right track and I'm hoping they'll take some of this feedback as part of the beta process and go ahead and make those tweaks to make this a much more valuable system. Uh, now, the next piece is vitals. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can access vitals. Uh, you can tap this little complication right there, that blue dotty dot thing. 
honestly, the, the dots on the complication make no sense to me, uh, but you can tap that there, um, or you can go down and find the Vitals app. In my case, I've got it right there. There we go. And this is basically your overnight vitals. This is purely focused on uh, what you did last night and over the last little while from a trending standpoint. It's not focused on activity during the day. Uh, so you can see here, my heart rate last night was 42 beats per minute. And if I go to the next one right there, my overnight vitals were typical overall. Let me go forward here. Uh, respiratory rate is 14, typical range. Wrist temperature, typical range. My blood oxygenation, oxygenation levels, typical range, and sleep duration, typical range. Uh, now, if one of these items was outside the typical range, it would give me a bit of a pink score. And then if two items were outside the range, it would give me a warning as well. And basically say, hey, there's something that might be impacting this. Uh, for better or worse, I've had not a single night of atypical stuff over the last month of using this, unfortunately. So I can't really show you that, uh, which is strange because I had some nights with four hours sleep and it never popped a warning at all, which I would think like that's sort of the point of this, to be honest, like every other wearable, Fitbit, Garmin, Polar Course, whatever, would have popped some sort of warning to be like, yo, your, your sleep was crap last night. And so the fact that this didn't is, is honestly a little bit strange to me. Uh, now, the last piece of note is that you can view all of these on the phone app, but also all the training load pieces as well. Uh, so if I go into the activities app here, this is just a standard activity app. I can, of course, customize all these tiles at the very bottom right there, uh, edit summary and see all categories uh, as part of the new iOS version. But I can also tap on training load. Um, by the way, I would point out that this here, uh, I wish that was a little bit different. Just like over on the watch, if I go down to the bottom, the training load piece there is just a flat line. Like this, this is the kind of detail that I hope they fix in beta and actually carry the, the little plots into these uh, preview right there. But in any case, tapping that in, you can see my actual training load um, over the last little while as that kind of fluctuates up and down uh, and I can go and you can change this to the right here. And what's cool, I like this as well, is you have the all day option. And all day is not looking at your training load, but looking at your total energy expenditure each day. So uh, a good example is on Saturday, I did basically the DC Rainmaker open house run with a bunch of people, but then I did a whole ton of other things on Saturday. It was a very busy day for me. Uh, and so I still had a lot of other stuff that wasn't classified as a workout, uh, but was something that, you know, basically you can see right there, uh, lots of other things going on. Uh, and so I can kind of look at this from a trending standpoint and see how does that compare uh, to my load. So you can also, you know, basically go just to running, go to cycling and so on. Also note on the training load standpoint, these are the sports right here that'll automatically calculate for you, but you can assign an effort score and effort rating to uh, any sport that you want to, any workout that you want to. Uh, and again, within this, I can also change any of these right here uh, from an effort score standpoint. I can tap this and I can change it right there, update that and it'll go ahead and update my training load as well. So overall, I think this is a very good start and something that's definitely approachable from like the mainstream side of it. I just like to see them make a few tiny little tweaks to be able to go ahead and make this a little more accessible to endurance sports athletes that are familiar with training load already and to be able to kind of see and understand what their training load's actually doing as opposed to just kind of a, a wavy graph that I, I can't really get a lot of data or sort of information about my training load from because it's kind of a bit too watered down. But that's a, a very minor tweak, just putting some numbers on that graph that they already have under the covers would just make a world of difference at this point in time. Anyways, if you found this video interesting or useful, go ahead and like that like button at the bottom or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. It's going to be a definitely a busy week. With that, have a good one.